Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into Guest Blade episode number 14. And a very exciting one too. Uh, as a matter of fact, I actually have other Guest Blade knives here tonight in my possession uh, that I'm bumping in order to get this one done ahead of the pack. Because when I unzipped the case on this, I was, I was taken aback and I had to share this with you as quickly as humanly possible. What we're going to do tonight is explore the Frank Fisher Battle, a knife that is astounding in every possible respect, and that's why uh, I felt the sense of urgency to uh, to get this done quickly. Um, before I get into it, I want to thank uh, David Flannery, whose knife this is. Uh, David actually did something quite unique. I had contacted Frank Fisher a couple of weeks ago, out of the blue, and after seeing a battle on his Instagram page, and I said, I, I don't know how long your wait is, but I need to get on your books. I need to have one of those. And he uh, reached out to me. He uh, responded back to me. He says, he goes, you know, it's a really strange coincidence. Uh, he goes, I actually know who you are because a, I'm building a knife for a customer right now who made the request that when I'm com completed uh, with the building process that I send it over to you before I send it to him because he really wants you to review it. And I had no idea. David hadn't contacted me at that point. I didn't know anything about it. And I was, uh, you know, obviously very, very flattered. So I have been just kind of, you know, bursting at the seams over this past week waiting for this to arrive. Uh, Frank got it done in a, a rather expeditious manner, got it out here to me. It arrived today. And it actually arrived while I was at work. And I didn't get to see it till I got home tonight at 10 o'clock. And I'm still reeling from it two hours later. So let's get into the knife first, then we'll talk a little bit about uh, Frank himself and, and his origins and his philosophies. So again, David, thank you so very much. I hope you enjoy the video. I'm going to be sending this out to you as quickly as humanly possible because you need to experience this knife. And before I even get off on anything else, what, what I found out was this was actually David's first full custom knife. And as you're about to see in this video, uh, he's screwed, man. He is ruined. And I, I had a conversation on the phone tonight with with Frank about the knife and, and, and everything. And I said, if this is where he's going to set the bar for his future purchases, he's setting him up, himself up for great disappointment. If you spend, you know, eight hundred, nine hundred, a thousand, twelve, thirteen hundred dollars on a knife, um, and you expect to get this, you're going to be greatly disappointed. So first things first, this is actually a lot smaller than you would think it is. As a matter of fact, the blade length is only about three and a quarter inches. Uh, the order that I have in with uh, Mr. Fisher is going to be for a much larger model, probably about 30, 40% larger, because as you're going to see in a few moments, this is actually really small in my hands. But one of the things I... Uh, I told Frank on the phone was, I said, just the fact that it, it is as small as it is and you were able to pull such incredible perfection out of it uh, actually even gives me even more respect for the knife because, you know, anything that you work with, the smaller it is, the harder it is to, to work with, quite obviously. So let's give you a nice external look before we get into the blade and everything else. Just beautiful work. This is this is a masterful, masterful piece right here. And I'm going to tell you right now from the get-go, there are very few knives you've ever heard me say the word perfection about, and this is one of them. And to, to give you an idea, I'm going to bring out another knife into this video to do a quick comparison, just to show you the level of workmanship that this guy is up to. Uh, I will tell you this up front, as before you even finish this video, you need to pause it and you need to send him an email. You can go to, I think it's frankfisherknives.com. Otherwise, you can just Google it, Frank Fisher Custom Knives, and uh, email him. Get on his books. Get on his list because uh, not that he has a lot of room on there to begin with, but he's about to fill up mighty damn fast. All right, so the first thing I want to talk about is the construction. Obviously, 6AL4V Titanium 
And I had to ask him about if he has a name for this particular finish that he's done. Because it looks to my eyes like frosted, like a frosted finish, like you would see on an aluminum finish. And he says, no, it's actually orange peel. I said, really? Because it's so fine. It's so finely done that it doesn't resemble any orange peel in anything that I've had. And to give you that comparison, let's take a look at that bolster versus an RJ Martin Q36 in an orange peel bolster. And you see how much more fine and articulated Frank's is over RJ. That to me is a more traditional kind of uh, orange peel. This is a whole other world. When you feel the knife in your hand, it's very smooth. Uh, there's very little in the way of transition between materials. And this is actually not a bolstered knife. It looks like a bolstered knife, but it's not. What he's done is he's taken one solid slab of titanium and he has milled out this entire area and then he has inlaid the carbon fiber. So it's actually a full tie knife with an inlay, but it gives you the look of a bolster. And I actually prefer this over a traditional bolster because I don't like a bolster cap being screwed on over a knife. It takes away from it, uh, in my opinion. This is something I uh, very much prefer. As you see, the blade centering is perfect. Very precise. You notice all the polishing that's been done by hand all the way around. And to be very clear, we had discussed, um, you know, his manufacturing process. He even does his own stock removal. Everything is done by him by hand. Uh, yes, he does everything initially with CNC. And that's typically the way with his blade. But on this one particular knife, he was uh, very quick to mention that this entire blade was completely done by hand by him. So now it's time to show you why... I love this knife so much. Look at that blade. Look at the difficulty in which it was ground. Notice also there's no straight edge on it. Even the spine is a beautiful, wonderful curve. You've got your recurve here, another recurve here, very pronounced flat, so he has gone very, very steep on that grind. So it's, it's, it's a micro paper edge. It's very, very, very thin. So you've got a very pronounced bevel. You see the cross section between the grinds is perfect. The symmetry is amazing. There's not a mistake made anywhere. You can see the hand rubbed finish on that satin. You see the degree of expertise that this guy has got. It's astounding. Now, the one thing that you'll find amazing is he is extraordinarily young. For those that don't recognize the name, his father is Todd Fisher. And you'll see some obvious influences in some of his design to what his father does. So it was his father that taught him how to make knives. And he has taken it from there with his own very unique and very aggressive style. He learned from one of the best. And you've seen, if you haven't seen, I have actually done a review on a, uh, on a Todd Fisher Archangel uh, not too long ago, about a month ago, from Justin Laffer's collection. It's in my guest blade section. His work is phenomenal. Everything is completely done by hand. He's got all this beautiful polishing. You'll notice the jeweling that's done inside of the liners. That's not something that you have to ask for uh, custom, by the way. He feels that if he doesn't finish both sides of the titanium, even the sides that are traditionally not seen, he says he doesn't feel that the knife is complete. Everything is amazing. And look at his pocket clip. 3D contoured pocket clip with no exposed hardware. And everything flows in and out of the design. Now, as you see, it is a rather small knife. I have a hard time actually getting it in my hand. So when I go to flip it, the, uh, the blade actually wants to, to hit my hand. So it's not going to flip as fast as it probably should. 
It's also brand new off of his uh, bench, by the way. So let's give you some size comparisons here. First, we'll go for a very classic traditional knife that everybody should know. And that is the Paramilitary 2. And when you put them butt to butt, the Paramilitary 2 is not a big knife. You'll see it actually dwarfs the battle. To give you some higher end comparisons, the one I actually I have to bring out and uh, forget size comparison uh, or anything else. I just have to do a quality just to give you an idea that I'm not insane and I'm not, I'm not trying to compare this to knives that I've never handled and saying it's one of the best. I think we all pretty much know what this symbol is. And I can tell you right now, this is a favorable comparison to a hand-built Brad Southern. And you guys know I hold Brad in extraordinarily high regard. As I sat here side by side, knife to knife, and compared the two, I could tell you right now that the quality, the fit and finish, the fluidity in which it opens, the overall feel, the lockup, the uh, lock bar tension, the friction of the detent ball against the blade, the fitting of the pivot is on par with a nearly $4,000 Southern. This is why I say if you guys don't get on his list super fast, that you're going to uh, <laughs> very much regret it because you're not going to be able to very quickly. I don't know which steel it is. I know that he has used S30V and uh, CPM 154, so I'm going to assume it's one of those two. Flawless finish throughout. Uh, it is garlic slicing sharp on every portion, from the tip being insanely pointy, all the way around, all the edges. There are very few knives that you can look at and say that I have to own this. That when you're holding it, you feel that if you don't own one at some point, uh, that there's a great tragic loss for your collection. And this is absolutely one of them. You see this uh, gear machined carbon fiber backspacer done perfectly. Everything is contoured, fit wonderfully. This comes to a nice point. Everything is appealing to the eye as well as the hand. And we all know that there are certain knives that may look really nice, but may not feel so great, may have some rough edges here and there. And you guys know, especially I'll knock a maker for not having enough relief on the lock bar when you go to disengage it. It's comfortable. It's comfortable to use. It's comfortable to carry, I would assume. I've not, I'm obviously not going to put this in my pocket. It's not my knife to do that with. I want to make sure that the owner gets a perfectly flawless knife, just as it was received by me. This is just gorgeous. Now, if I had to knock anything, and it's not really a knock, but more of a suggestion. You're talking about a knife that's in the twelve to $1,300 range. In my opinion, uh, it certainly compares to knives that cost a fair amount more. As you just saw, I, I can very easily compare it to a Southern and say that it's uh, every bit as nice. What I would say is for a knife at this price range, there should be custom hardware. Completely proprietary, <clears throat> custom design, custom machine, uh, most importantly at the pivot. That's it. That's the only one thing that I can say about this entire knife that I would change. Now, like I said, on for my personal tastes, and I, I try to keep my personal tastes out of these reviews, but my personal taste is for a much larger knife. So we're going to go, you know, this is a three and a quarter inch blade. We're probably going to go 3.65, 3.75. That'll bring the handle out another half inch as well. Then it's going to fill the hand better. But for those that like a smaller knife, I can't think of a better way to go. Man, his detent is nice. The one thing I forgot to ask about, and I might be able to see it in here, uh, is if it's on bearings or washers. I know that his father uh, makes his own bearings for his knives. And I will just go with the assumption that he's using the same bearings on this because, it, again, 
very, very smooth. Love that detent. Opens nice and fast. And once it's lubed up and broken in, it's going to be even faster. This is one that I will definitely say I, I do have a little bit of jealousy for the owner. And again, not in a negative way. Not, oh my God, all my stuff is crap now that I've seen this. But I'm, I'm still very happy to have had the chance to hold this and play with this. And I'm envious because I don't have mine yet. And it's probably going to be a year before I see mine. That's totally fine. This is the kind of knife that you will gladly wait as long as it takes to get your hands on. One of the things I was discussing with Todd was there's a certain level of expectation that we as consumers will have for certain price ranges. There are certain boxes that have to be checked off when you're buying a custom in the $500, $800 range. You know, it's got to have a certain type of lockup. It's got to have no blade play. It's got to have perfect centering and it's got to have good quality materials. Now, when you get up to that $1,000 price range, those aren't option boxes that you should feel the need to check off. Those are standard. You should not ever pick up a $1,000 custom and even have those concerns. You shouldn't look at it and go, well, what the hell, my blade's not centered. Or when I release the lock bar, I feel blade wiggle side to side. Those are things that come naturally for a knife maker at that level. When you're spending this kind of money, you know, again, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen hundred dollars, then it's not even about all those things because all those things are going to be there. Now you're going to be looking at the the minutia, the teeniest, tiniest things, how the inlays fit with the titanium, how the overall design flows. Is there anything that detracts? from the overall beauty of the knife because now now you've gone away from the realm of just being a tactical knife and having a practicality to it that you now must have that tactical practicality and carry ability along with an artful aesthetic presence and what you've got here is a beautiful clean flowing design with no broken lines everything is ergonomic even for a larger hand like me while it may be too small for me, I don't feel like it's going to go anywhere. You know, there's no jimping or anything else on this entire knife, yet it feels secure in my hand. I feel comfortable with this. I would feel comfortable carrying it. Every edge is perfectly radiused. Everything is finished. The edges of all the titanium. Inside of the liners, you look at the lock face, and that's been finished. And that's one key thing that a lot of makers just don't pay a lot of attention to. The way the flipper feels, it's not too big, it's not too small, it's not at a goofy, awkward angle. It's rounded off so you don't have sharp edges digging into your finger. Because again, a knife like this, you're going to want to play with it over and over and over and not feel like you're being abused uh, to some degree. The finish work when it comes to the blade, it should be perfection. And that's precisely what you're getting here. So if you're worried about, well, he's a newer knife maker and he's a really, really young guy and his name isn't really all that big yet. I don't know if I want to drop well over a thousand dollars at a beginning price to get into his knives. Don't have those fears because the quality is there. There are a lot of knife makers that I really like. There are a lot of knives that I really like and some that I love. But there is a certain cutoff. There's a certain degree of quality that you expect for a certain dollar amount. This honestly exceeded the expectations I had. And mine is going to cost a lot more because it's a lot bigger. He gave me kind of the ballpark on it. I won't share it yet because who knows what it's going to come out to be at the end. Um, but it's, it's a significant amount more money. Because I'm going on a lot bigger scale. And I'm not going to lie, there was a certain degree of trepidation that came with saying, okay, let's just go ahead and do it. I'm, I was going based off of pictures, and they looked beautiful. But now that I've held it, no problem at all. Not a problem at all. So if you're looking for something unique, something aggressive, something that 
looks like it's going to hurt you when it's just sitting on the desk in front of you. Then you want to get yourself a battle. Now, he does make other models, the Commander and other models. Go check them out on his website. Some that are a little bit less aggressive, but still shows the technical prowess that he's got. I don't even want to know how much blade stock he's gone through to perfect this grind. How many mistakes were made? How many blades had to be thrown away? Because this is the type of engineering, this is the type of work that you don't get a second chance at. You're going to get so far with it, and that at that point you just kind of have to hold your breath and pray for the best. And man, just look at that. Beautiful finish on the spine too. And everything is perfectly symmetrical. Which you got to realize, guys, he's doing this by hand. That's a, that's a very tough task. And you might have somebody that's really good, you know, grinding from one direction. Then they switch hands. And this hand isn't quite as precise as the other hand was. And he was able to nail it. So anyway, that is uh, my look at the Frank Fisher battle. You will be seeing another video when I get mine. And probably more. I'll probably, uh, I'll probably get more than one knife. So there it is, guys, and I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. There's no way that you did, because until you hold it in your hand, you can't truly enjoy it. But it was a great pleasure for me to bring this out. I'm going to try to get some more videos out as quickly as I can. Uh, I will put a link to Frank's website down below in the description so that you can more easily find it. Do yourself the favor. At the very least, talk to him. Get an idea of what he's like. He's got a great personality. He's, a very, he's very generous with his time. And he makes a hell of a product. And you know what? Because he does everything by hand, I would have to assume the sky is the limit. If you wanted to do whatever materials you can think of, I'm sure he can work with them. All right, guys, I'm going to let it go with that. I'm going to sign off for now, and I will see you again soon.